Welcome. In this video, we'll have a closer look at Love Filter. Love Filter is an advanced, loopable filter plugin consisting of eight identical filter units. Each can be run in parallel, used in series by sending a filter unit to the next one in the chain, or both. Love Filter can create complex filter patterns, gating effects, phase dispersion, distortions, And you can use the X and Y macros to control many parameters at once from a single automation source. Top left are the filter unit tabs and switches, above the tabs. Turn each filter on and off from here. Each filter unit has multiple stages of processing arranged in the order of the signal flow. The input section allows you to set the volume of the input signal. This is always referring to the plugin's direct input. If you do not want a filter to receive direct input from the mixer and only input from other filter units, that means serial routing, turn this down all the way. The filter section determines the filter type and cutoffs used. Some filters, like peaking and shelving filters, will have an extra gain control, and there is a special low-pass filter that uses the extra control to overdrive the filter stage, creating multiple resonance peaks in the spectrum. If you would like to know more about how the basic filter types work, please check out the updated Parametric EQ2 video, where we go into detail about common filter designs. All of those, and more, are represented here. Love Filter has our usual suspects. Band pass, two different high passes, a high shelf, three different low passes, one of which being special, a low shelf, a band stop notch or band reject filter, a peaking or bell filter, and a state variable filter, which is a combination of low, band and high pass filters in parallel. This one allows mixing between the three different filters with the sliders here. All pass filters shift the phase around the cutoff frequency according to the resonance or bandwidth, most noticeable when mixed in with the input audio. Use the ALT control to switch to a different mapping for the resonance knob. This is most noticeable with bandpass, peaking and notch filters. The single, dual and triple buttons are 12, 24 and 36 dB per octave filters respectively. This is done by stacking another instance or two of the selected filter type at the same cutoff frequency in series. Alt, dual and triple options use offsets in the stacked filters cutoff frequencies. You can see that with band stop and peaking filters as they produce two or three notches or peaks in the spectrum. The envelope knob sets the amount the cutoff frequency is influenced by the envelope, LFO and input envelope follower. Cutoff sets the cutoff frequency of the filter. Resonance adjusts resonance or bandwidth. Be aware that for band pass, band stop and peaking filters, 
The resonance knob is used for bandwidth. So for those filters, 0% is actually the most resonant setting. Every filter unit has its own wave shaper. A wave shaper is a wave distortion effect, which remaps input amplitude values on the horizontal axis to output amplitude values on the vertical axis using a flexible spline-based graph. This type of graph is often also called transfer curve, which you may have heard before when exploring the concept of compression. Essentially, a wave shaper is a very flexible compressor without any time variables. The amplitude change happens instantly, causing distortion in the waveform. Turn the wave shaper on and off here. You can switch between unipolar and bipolar modes of operation with this control. In unipolar mode, both top and bottom halves of the waveform are affected evenly. This type of distortion will produce odd numbered harmonics only. So you can turn a sine wave into a square with this. In bipolar mode, it is possible to change the bottom half of the waveform in a different way to the top half. This is called asymmetric distortion, and it will produce the full harmonic series. With some careful mapping, it is possible to change a sine wave into a saw with this method. This can introduce a DC offset, meaning a static offset in the vertical position of the waveform. Think of it as a frequency at zero hertz. This is generally unwanted and can be eliminated with a soft high pass filter. Below the XY pad, you can select various options that can make specific presets, especially ones with wave shaper enabled, sound better. Center, for example, enables a slight high pass filter at 20 Hz that removes global DC offset. Oversampling can increase the internal sample rate of love filter to avoid aliasing artifacts introduced by distortion. Options are 2x, 4x, 8x or 16x. Be aware that 8x and 16x do significantly increase the CPU load as the plugin has to process a multiple of the input samples at the same time. This is still noticeable even on a very modern system and can stack up quickly if you're not careful. For the vast majority of material, 2x and 4x oversampling should be enough. And HQ Envelopes enables greater envelope accuracy for those times when it's about single pixels in the graph. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Incidentally, you can resize Love Filter and give yourself more screen real estate to work with in the envelope section. The amp knob adjusts how hard the input is driven into the wave shaper and mix sets the wave shaper mix amount. This allows you to blend the input signal with the processed signal in the final output. In the output section, each filter can pass its output to the following bank or the main outputs. Set how much of the current filter's output is routed to the next one in the chain with the next control. Turn it up for positive polarity and down for negative polarity. Pan will change the panning of the direct output from the filter. And volume controls the direct output level for the selected filter. That means it will come out of the plugin directly, not through any of the next filters. Associated with each filter unit are a number of articulators slash envelopes. There are two rows of tabs. The top row is used to select the parameter to be modulated, and the bottom row is for the modulation source. You will see this system used in many of our plugins. You can modulate panning, volume, cutoff, resonance, low, band and high mix for the state variable filter, low doubles as the drive parameter for the mango low pass. Further, you can automate the wave shaper mix here. WS is where you edit the actual curve of the wave shaper, so that's not a modulation target. You'll see it doesn't have the bottom row of modulation sources available. Every parameter that has active modulation will show a yellow line next to it. For every parameter above, you can choose from a range of modulators and how they will influence it. The modulator can be a pattern, 
LFO, mod X and Y macros accessible for mouse input or automation here, or the amplitude of the input audio through an input envelope follower, or IEF. This modulator is a bit like using peak controller, in fact. Same as with the parameters, a yellow line is shown when a modulator is in active use. Right-click anywhere to add points to the envelope. Click and press the delete key on your keyboard to delete points. Shift right-click to add a point that is exactly on the vertical position of the existing graph. Right-click tension handles to reset them. Select multiple points by drawing a box with Control, Shift and Click. There are additional envelope options in the envelope menu, but for the sake of brevity, we will skip them in this video. What's most important in Love Filter is how to create a looping envelope in the pattern section. For that, you will need at least three breakpoints in your envelope to hear any significant change. Then, right click the first one and set it to be loop start. Right click the last one and select sustain loop end. Now this segment of the envelope will loop indefinitely. So you can use this to make very intricate time synchronized looping sequences. You can automate which pattern is selected. There are 10 slots to choose from. It's also possible to switch these slots with keys on your controller keyboard, but only when Love Filter is focused. In the menu up here, you can turn this behavior on and off. Also, synchronize pattern changes to make sure they happen on beat. You can also copy and paste Love Filter presets from here. As we noted earlier, Love Filter has two macro controls titled X and Y that are represented in this XY pad. This is mainly for use with the mouse or touch inputs, but you can automate the knobs here to control X and Y values directly. Optionally, you can enable automation smoothing for X and Y values with the smooth switch. And while we're talking about global controls, these three sliders control master volume, global LFO amount, and global IEF amount. These controls allow you to tweak the input envelope follower. It's available as a modulation source and is based on the amplitude of the input waveform, like peak controller. You can enable use one to use the output from filter bank one as the input for the IEF. When disabled, the direct input to the plugin is used as the source for the IEF. Attack sets the smoothing of rising edges. And release adjusts the smoothing of falling edges in the resulting automation. The IEF window works from minimum to maximum level, left to right. As volume peaks of the input signal come into Love Filter, the IEF returns modulation values so that envelope values above the center line of the graph area are added to the existing cutoff value and envelope values below the center line are subtracted from the existing cutoff. When you're very specific with filter frequencies and resonance settings, it's possible to impart the frequency response of vowels on any incoming audio. This preset makes short work of that. Five bandpass filters in parallel with a low and high pass in unit six and seven to add missing low and high frequencies after the fact. A sound that has become more and more popular in recent years is phase dispersion. It's created via incrementally shifting the phase of low frequencies so they hit your ears slightly after the higher frequencies. You can do that with a stack of all pass filters in series. This preset is eight all passes in series. For a more drastic version of this effect, use several instances, 
like in this Pacha preset aptly titled Disperser. Lots of bass music essentially uses the same process to design the main frequency response of its sounds. A set of filters in series, then distortion, then more filtering and more distortion, etc. With Love Filter, you can combine this part of the process into one plugin. Link your main filter frequencies and resonances to Mod X and some offsets through Mod Y, and you can end up with a versatile shaping and morphing articulation that you can automate by hand. When you're editing pattern envelopes in step edit mode, you can hold shift to add hold type breakpoints in step increments. This makes it easy to quickly mix stepped filter sequences in sync with your song. Since the patterns are an offset to the existing cutoff control, you can still automate the cutoff in addition to the sequence. Phasing happens when you mix an all pass filtered signal with an unaffected copy. So, when using multiple all pass filters in parallel, mixed with the original audio, you can create a highly customized phaser in Love Filter. Usually phasers will have built-in LFOs that automate the cutoffs of the all-pass filters. With the XY pad, you can however choose to manually control all the cutoffs with one parameter. Use the manual option in Vintage Phaser for a more basic version of this effect. And with that, we've reached the end of this tutorial. We hope this video helps you understand a little better what Love Filter is and why it's such a powerful tool. Don't forget to check out the video information for helpful links to the manual and the demo projects we made for this video. Happy music making!